for them to understand what happened it, it is very deep it's deep rooted in the government's approach to deal with seat resistance okay. and, deep, and revolutionary views as soon as I heard it was about three o'clock half past three I think um, I got a message and I checked my and the, the, the news was a road traffic accident and immediately immediately and I never have I had this feeling before immediately I thought this foul play here yeah, yeah. that this was an absolute planned assassination elimination mm. because we got to look at this in the context in the Deep Siddhu had galvanized the sword of the Nordwan, the use not only in Punjab but around the world and we haven't seen that happen since Sanjana Singh Khasa Prindawale and his voice still echoes yeah. and gives goosebumps to not only to, to us but it, it, it scares the life out of, out of uh, the Indian government and Deep Siddhu and it's that spirit, that activism spirit within him. He was able to just pick the points that many political leaders, many Dharmic leaders had failed to raise and connect with the Nordwan as well as he did. And if you look at his, all the comforts he left, he forgave, forgo all of those, his lifestyle, he was a movie star. Yeah. I mean, this is unheard of, yeah. that a movie star quits all of that and for for his love for his land for his his heritage his his faith and his beliefs he gave that all up and came and stood with ordinary farmers on the front line of the Kazan Morja. Yeah. But when you think about beyond that protesting, beyond the, the speeches, it was his ideals. In the fact that if you look at what he inspired people in the Kasan Morcha that we are enslaved mm. and not just physically but psychologically mm. and those who've been on the campaign and talking about the atrocities of June 1984 the genocides uh, and all of the, the state oppression that we've endured for the last 37 years we've been saying this but Deep Siddhu coming out and saying it gave a whole new level of credibility yeah. to the Sikh struggle in that he was a, a, a qualified lawyer from the Indian system, you could say, mm. who was actually pointing the finger back at them and saying that Sikhs and Punjabis in general were psychologically enslaved. And it was un not until that they realized the level of enslavery that could we be free. And in the Kasan Morcha, I think the one that really connected to, with me was whilst we all were, were focused on the black laws, the three farm laws, Deep's view was that it wasn't just the farm laws. That was just a symptom of the oppression. Yeah. It was how the state had engineered control of Punjab's politics, its resources, its eco economics, and its education. And Deep Siddhu was raising all of these points that when Punjab rises, it needs to rise against all of these issues and fight for all of its rights, equality, economic, social, um, and all fundamentally is self-determination. And I think once you start to connect with those revolutionary ideals, and you realize that actually the, the, the thing that we've been fighting, the truth, the justice, and the freedom we've been seeking, this was something a famous actor was articulating in Punjab, mm. that even the Indian media couldn't debate with him. Yeah. To this day, I have not seen somebody go on to the Indian media and the Godi media specifically and absolutely defend Santana in Khasa Prindawale and actually completely control the conversation and make those media presenters actually have to be quiet because he was that confident. He was that confident that he could speak and defend Santaji Sorge and actually how it mattered today and in reality. And I think it's those ideals and those leadership qualities that we now miss and lack the most. And, and when you, anyone who's followed the last 35, seven years knows what the Indian state is capable of, whether it was the Indian state, the Punjab state, we don't know yet, but this was absolutely uh, a targeted elimination and the facts are there for themselves. And, I, and I'll end on 
the three or four things I follow specifically, and, and Adish uncle mentioned it, the truck, it, this was a highway. We, they were driving on the motorway, the central lane. And for the truck to break suddenly, with the brake skid marks to be up to 20, 25 foot. And the impact was on the driver's side, which meant he would have had to steer to the, to the left to hit it, which isn't a natural reaction. There was no punctures on any of the vehicles, so there was no blowouts of tyres. There was no damage to tyres on Deep Siddhu's vehicle. He was under no intoxication. He did not take any nasha, so he wasn't taking alcohol, drugs or anything. In his whole life, he hadn't taken it. And the way that the vehicle has crushed mm. is complete. Any everybody seen the video and the footage. The vehicle, uh, the, the Mahindra Scorpio, is completely crushed, mm. the whole front end. And there was no injuries on Deep Sindhu's body. I mean, I've seen pictures and I've seen some pictures be shared. I don't want to share them, but of his body lying on, on the stretcher. And you can physically see from his head down there are no injuries. Just a, a, his head is all, all split. And it, these do not, and I, we're not uh, experts uh, in this, but there's, you know enough that it is far too suspicious. And if you know the context of what we just talked about, then it is highly likely and highly probable, uh, and I'm 100% convinced that this was uh, uh, a targeted elimination of a political Sikh leader.